a pleasure to be here. Uh, so my work is on collective animal behavior. So what we see here are, are schools of fish, and shortly you see flocks of birds. And what's fascinated me ever since I was a kid is how and why animals coordinate their behavior in this way. And so we develop computer simulations, as shown here, where we can show in actual fact where, where people used to think this was driven by telepathy or thought transference, what we now know it's driven by relatively local interactions among the individuals. And we also develop highly quantitative techniques. So using computer vision and using Microsoft Connect to do 3D imaging, we can track the motion of people in crowds. We can track where you are. We can also track where you're looking. And what you maybe don't realize is that there's socially contagious behavior when you're in, when you're in a crowd. So I can't talk about all of these issues today. So I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you some of the work that we've been doing on locusts. So you're probably all, you know, you're all familiar with this sort of biblical plague type organism, the desert locust. And you know, you've seen footage like this. But what most people don't realize is in actual fact, locusts don't have wings until the last stage of their lives. So for the first two months of their life, they're wingless nymphs called hoppers. And so in my lab, We've bred these insects, and they'll, they'll hatch out, and they'll dry themselves under heat lamps, you know, they, their representation of the sun, and they'll start marching together. And why is this an important problem? Well, I do my field research in Mauritania. I will show you some pictures of that shortly. But this one species of locust can invade up to one-fifth of the Earth's land surface during plague years. But these are poor countries who cannot afford to buy chemicals. So there's virtually no money and no research going into this. This is despite the fact that the FAO estimates that they impact the livelihood of one in 10 people on the planet. And in the journal Science, it was written that even after 50 years of experience, fighting locusts is more of an art than a science. That's incredibly embarrassing, because it's very well studied as the individual locust. But people hadn't looked at what happens when they are a collective. And so we developed an experimental system. Fortunately for us, these are not the smartest animals out there. And so we can put them in this annulus arena, and they'll march around for eight hours a day, thinking they're in this never-ending desert environment. <laughs> and I've, I've developed software that can track the motion of the individuals and look at how they interact, again, local interactions. And we discovered something quite remarkable. This looks like some sort of cooperative behavior, but in actual fact, they're highly aggressive. And they're constantly nipping and biting at each other, and sometimes completely consuming each other. And so to try and test this idea, uh, I, I went to, to Mauritania. I showed you a map earlier on. And I found the locusts, which is actually quite difficult in, in large sub-Saharan Africa. And so you can see the footprints of the locust swarms in the sand behind me. And that's me filming the locusts. And, and there's our camel. It's not very often you do field research with a camel, so I took <laughs> multiple pictures of it. But um, <laughs> it, it, it turns out that I'm not very good in the field. Um, I had run out of food. I was there for two and a half months, and I ran out of food about one month in. And I had been vegetarian for 10 years prior to this trip. Uh, and the only thing we could buy, of course, there was a famine. There was a desert, pla uh, desert locust plague, so I didn't, didn't think about that. Uh, so the only thing that we could buy were camel entrails. Um, and then once I recovered from an extreme <laughs> illness that, 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 that ensued from eating those camel entrails, this, this huge wall of sand then descended upon us. This is actually the same storm taken from NASA's website. Um, so I gave up, and I came to the good old US of A, where they have roads and, and, and uh, such things. And so we studied the Mormon cricket. So this is another organism that forms these massive plagues. And you can see the individuals here. Now you think, you know, you'll think of locusts, you think of these crickets, you think, well, they're, they're vegetarian, aren't they? No, you'll see them if you have roadkill, such as this rabbit. You know, they've eaten the ears, they're crawling in through the eyes and the mouth, really quite repulsive. And they also, <laughs> they also frequently eat each other. And so uh, this is uh, sort of a, a living histogram, so to speak. And of course, I randomized the, in the real experiments just to show you here. You can see them chowing down on different salt concentrations. And 0.25 is the one they love. They're fighting each other over the salt concentration. And that turns out to be the concentration of their blood. So what we discovered with locusts and crickets is it's not cooperative. It looks like they're all helping each other. But in actual fact, these are cannibalistic insects on a forced march. They run out of protein. They run out of salt. 
assault, and they turn on each other. Stop and you risk being cannibalized. So individuals are attacking those ahead and trying to avoid being attacked from behind. And the outcome is collective motion. And we're now developing computer simulations and using satellite data to now understand where and when is protein going to be limited in an environment so we can predict locust outbreaks. So thank you very much.